Alright guys, welcome back. Yeah, it's me, Daniel, VintageMagic.com, and today we're changing up the pace, and we're doing some original magic artwork, um, and also a special Marvel painting surprise in the end here. Also, I have this box right here, that's from Rebecca Gay and her Kickstarter that she had recently, uh... I will try to find the link of, uh, I'll put Rebecca's website if you want, if you missed out, she had a bunch of play mats, uh, other artwork and such that you could probably still purchase from her. And let's start out. So this is not the original Diamond Valley. Look carefully guys, it says right here, repaint. And if you guys follow this channel, you guys know I'm a collector, investor, uh, lover of all of the magic art, uh, the old magic art specifically. Um, I do have a lot of modern art. I get asked this all the, all the time. But this was done in 2020, and I had this actually matted. See how it's really thick? Matted and clear bag. So basically has the archival uh, just protection uh, for either resale or storage. So if you touch it, it's pretty you know, nice and protected. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so let me, let me start a little pile here. This is the, obviously you can tell the next guy. Next guy here is the Jihad. Jihad is, well, uh, according to Wizards, it's pretty uh, much banned from existence. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is it the word or is it the image? I don't think so. I don't think the images have nothing to do with it. It's just a bunch of guys fighting each other, but it's the word. So... But nevertheless, the card has still gone crazy in value, and uh, yeah, I don't think it's ever going to really change. People will still want to collect the cards and invest in the cards. All right, next we have Abu Jafar. Look at that. That guy. Again, not the original, but the repaint. This is, uh, I think this is the same size. So these are 8 by 10s or Oh, you know what? Here we go. Look at this. This is kind of cool. Yeah, so I commissioned uh, uh, Ken Meyer Jr. three of these guys, replicas, and they're numbered and everything, so pretty much uh, the client knows that on the back of the painting. So this is number, I thought it's either signed or numbered somewhere, but it's definitely is numbered in pencil. Uh, I get asked all the time, why use pencil? That's interesting. Pencil is actually archival. Uh, something uh, my friends and in the community of art have uh, asked, asked, is it archival, using archival products? Is it, uh, you know, something that is, has a, doesn't have that acid where it's going to just wear over time? Pencil, as uh, I think I've spoken to Brian Stoney about, this is actually um, very archival and will last the test of time. Um this is the Kurt Ape, obviously. Probably the best one-drop red creature ever made. Um, this is also Ken uses watercolor, by the way. This is watercolor. I think it's, yeah, strictly watercolor. Very talented to be able to, to do that. To do that kind of level of detail. Almost, you have to know the lighting, the shadowing, and everything correctly. Or the uh, just the contra. How to really pop everything out without making it so blotchy. Almost like a... Impressionism painting, but very crisp, very clean. Incredible. Obviously, Ernum de Jin, famous, famous, famous card for magic. Uh, this card is uh, just super iconic. And we got some of those done by Ken. And lastly, the big daddy of them all. Oh, yeah. My favorite. The Guardian Beast. Oh, yeah. I, uh... I've always loved this card in Arabian Nights, probably ever since just, you know, I never opened a pack when I was young, but uh, when I was, you know, I just collecting the card and also playing with the card, I would always love just, this, just what it did and also the artwork is just phenomenal. It just pops out. My friend Dale has the original, but look, this thing, have you looked at this compared to the original? The original is probably worth, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Look at this guy. Even though it's 2020, Ken Meyer Jr., excellent, beautiful artwork. By the way, if you want to support Ken, he's on Facebook. I'll try to put 
the link of every artist's Facebook. So if you want to do some commissions with them, that would be awesome. Tell them that I sent you your their way. All right, what do we got next? Okay, so, oh, I'm not going to open this, but then I did some larger ones of the Kurt Ape, Guardian Beast, and Abu Jafar, and Ernam Dijin uh, from Ken. Those are like 11 by 14s, I think. I'm not going to open that. No reason to open that because of the fact that it's just re re replicated. Okay, so, next guy, well, you just sound like, as like a little section here. Okay, so what is this? I I like to keep them in store like this. Oh, look at this. It's like it's like literally Christmas, guys. This. Oh wow. It's. Oh wow. It's. Oh yeah. I remember this. These are the Rebecca G Gay Mountain. Oh wow. Oh, I don't know if you guys remember. I. I framed these a while back. Or actually, the original one was the island. So, where is that island one? Oh, here it is. The... So, the island, this one here, the island, has already been happening before. And by the way, I don't always open everything up of my art. And you'll notice I don't always do that because I want to actually come on and store it. Again, no light, no, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, actual uh Light hitting on the artwork is great for it uh, to keep it stored. So these I'm gonna I'm gonna open them up and fr uh, actually hang them up. So oh I see what oh yeah, yeah yeah okay. So this island was or it's a waterfall but it's the island for Commander 2016 I believe. And this one actually is um, the one I already had done. But notice that it was kind of like this uh, is. Gr grayish platinum color or I'm sorry uh, silver color whereas this mountain guy it's the same frame they're able to sign the same frame but I'm not sure if they actually found the same oh there's no uh, acry uh, acrylic it's just oil so you wanted to let it breathe interesting gosh Rebecca's style just looks like something you see at a museum seriously unbelievable just love it all right so that and they're all the same size, which is excellent. I, was little, I, I, I honestly didn't remember the exact thing. Because sometimes, you know, I'm traveling. I have a lot of pieces. I, I don't remember every single thing. Oh, by the way, if you want to go to mainframe, check them out. Tell them Daniel sent you. They can do uh, overseas stuff, I'm sure, out of the country. There you go. Check them out, mainframe. They're awesome. Uh, Julie Barrow, the original artist. Started that shop. This is the planes. Look at that. That is something incredible. I love to sit there one day and not have any electronics. Look at the details. So I believe this was uh, the story on this one is that the painting was um, created and then digitally enhanced just a little bit, but it was pretty much done. And Rebecca then um, finished it up. And then it was sold to me. I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to acquire because I got the others. Yeah, I got the uh, the island originally, or the waterfall as they call it. All right, so I zoomed in there for you guys so it's a little bit better. So let's see what we got here. I don't know the order here. I think this is the right, okay. All right, here we go. Oh, beautiful. This one I really like. I gotta say, this one is really, really beautiful. Uh, is the color, I think this is all the same. These, or maybe, I don't know. Look at that, the forest. Oh, so this is something like out of Disney, in my opinion. Just something magical. I don't know what it is. This guy. I noticed, you know, I, I'm not an artist, but in the middle, you kind of have the light. Your focus is attention is towards the middle. I noticed this a lot with like John Avon, uh, really well-known uh, landscape artists like even Rob Alexander. Light is used beautifully in some cases. Even even the Noah Bradley, even though he was, uh, he had a lot of problems with his, uh, kind of his, I think he had a sexual, sexual, not sexual assault, but people accusing him of stuff. He was, he's an amazing landscape artist. I mean, that's the thing. 
So um, his his use of light, his paintings are usually digital, but it's beautiful. Okay, and then all oh, this one's really awesome. And the last one here, I think. Something that you see out of, I was just in New Orleans, something that you see out of the bayou, something you would see in even, like, it's incredible. This is a magic, the gathering land, basic land. Commander 2016 by Rebecca Gay. Oil on panel. Look at this. This is not normal, in my opinion. This is not, I, I, I don't, when you look at these paintings, this is not something you see every single day every single day of the week for magic so i gotta give it to rebecca great beautiful art hold on i'll zoom in one more time yeah this is not normal i'm really happy with the frame job and i'm excited to find out where i'm going to be able to put this and hang this just gorgeous i you know obviously with every with magic i can't put every piece framed you know around office area house whatever you know but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this one all right let's get into the next ones here in a second all right guys and we're back so i was going to do the uh the the kickstarter for rebecca gay's art next uh or just in this video but i think i'm gonna stick with the magic art just because oh this is gonna be a great little fun little exercise i think you'll like this this, wow, is the Mox Pearl repaint. Or is it the real one? Interesting. All right. Look at that. By Dan Fraser. So cool. This thing is actually pretty big. I think I wanted it to be like 9 by 12. Uh, I paid a little, a little bit more for that. It's not the typical size. Let me. I'll be right back. To show you the print and also something special. All right, this is the game show. Can you be fooled? So this looks like the original Mox Pearl, or is it? Okay. Now, watch this. Use some gridded cards <laughs> as to kind of stand this up. Better lighting there. Okay, so. How's this? This one here is, is that the original? Mm, wow, that kind of looks deeper in gray. This is by, yep, if you can tell, right? It is, you're right, it is 100% a print by Dan Frazier. Good catch if you caught that. And uh, archival backing and also matted and everything, clear bagged. Look at that. But I went to Utah recently to finish up a deal for this guy. Oh my God, and there it is. You're probably wondering what the heck's going on. How in the world do you... Yes, guys, this is the original Alpha Mox Pearl. The original. No, seriously, the original. Um, this is the... Uh, there it is. Garfield Games, where it started. That's not archival. This is a Sharpie, so in time, that's going to be going to have to be preserved. You can already tell the yellowing, but this is, well, really old. You can tell the tape's yellowing, kind of like the Time Lock original. Um, interesting about the Mox, Moxes is that this actually is painted. I, mean, I don't know if you can tell. See, there's brush strokes and varnished the, the pearl and the jewels have all been glued or something on a fixative onto the surface um and it's not marble paper so like the mox jet and the mox ruby and the sapphire mox sapphire is using marble paper whereas um the others are not wow this is incredible look at this so this is the print. Wow. So the, I don't know. It's hard to really tell. So this is, let me just do this. I'll just do it like this. Can I get them all like that? Yeah. It's kind of incredible.
Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, I have that plastic on the print, but I'm looking at the print, and this is actually a really good scan, I think, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of paper this is, but anyway, I feel like, you know, like people ask me, like, how do you know if it's the real thing? And obviously, I'm getting it from, you know, a collector, longtime collector. And I, and the history of this is that it was on eBay years ago. And he acquired it from the a guy on eBay. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's like, unless you know magic art and you analyze the cards and everything, it's really hard because in a weird way, this gray is kind of color, has been color uh, corrected, if that makes sense. It's color corrected. It's almost as if all these speckles, it's zoomed out. Now, this is more zoomed in, the original. So this is kind of interesting. Really interesting. All right, and by the way, Dan Frazier's prints, I will try to put that information in the link below so you can purchase them. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And next, we have a little, uh, we'll finish up the rest of the moxes here. You know, I just realized something. Look carefully. Huh. This is the Mox Pearl original. It has, on the bottom part, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles. And then on the top one here, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. If you look at the Mox Pearl print, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, not seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, correct? And then on this remake one, it has one, two, three, four, five. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So strange, interesting. It's almost and so you have stuff the five right there, prongs right there. And obviously replicas, it can't be perfect, but that kind of is, I don't know, just an interesting thing because that kind of matters. <laughs> if you're doing a replica, right? A repaint, it needs to be as similar as possible. I have to mention that to Dan's agent, Mark Aronowitz, here after this. Okay, all right, continue on to the next repaints. All right, so to continue on, on the Mox repaints, the top right there is the awesome Mox Diamond from Stronghold. Risen in value dramatically here the last few years. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed that the frames, are these ones are black, but this is kind of a red one. Look at that. That is freaking awesome. Wow. This is the, obviously the Mox Ruby. I think the Mox Ruby was also marble paper. So marble paper was Mox Ruby, Sapphire, and Jet. Emerald and Pearl, The right here, that was all um, marble paper. And then these were always a cutout, just like the Pearl was a minute ago. All right. Pretty freaking awesome, huh? I don't know if those white dots were intentional, but... Still really cool. Now, you know, again, it's not meant for it to be, uh, it's not simply a copy, right? It's impossible, you know, I, there was a show actually I watched, I don't know if you guys saw this on Netflix, about this guy uh, from Brooklyn, New York, repainting, you know, not, you know, old masters paintings, kind of, you know, try to imitate the old masters, or in this case, it was Jackson Pollock and Rothschild, which is a, uh, Famous, famous uh, modern art painting uh, history. You've looked that up. It's really great. I forgot. I think it's now you see it, now you don't, or I don't know. It's it's just type in art and then fake on the search on Netflix. This is the mock jet. Obviously, this is interesting. On the original, there's like a, the marble paper is kind of wrinkled and that around here or something, and it, it kind of sh it shows up on the card. So it was like that during the printing of. The card, the original scan. I don't know. Was it? Is it, is it because the marble paper got warped with the water? Because you have to put some type of liquid, right? Probably my one of my favorite ones ever is the Mox Emerald. There he is. So, look at that! Unbelievable, beautiful. Jeez, look at that! Look at that oil. Look at that. 
it's oil, 100% oil. One of the most beautiful ones. Super iconic. Super iconic. People love this painting in general. Um, Dan's a great guy also. If you ever go to a Magic Fest, when they ever open, do you think, do you think they're going to open this year? I heard Gen Con's opening. We'll see. And last but not least, the big daddy of them all, blue frame and all, the Mox Sapphire. Oh, yeah. This is not the original, obviously. I own the original. Pause your camera. You can see that the this right here is completely different. And I've noticed something. Again, I'll point out that that is a blue frame, by the way. It's meant to be. This is there. His prints are to mimic these repaints. So interesting enough, they're not using the original one, which is really interesting. Something I just realized about that. So it's the mock. Okay, it's. It, these are prints signed by Dan Frazier, but they're not the original painting. I'll have to ask. That's a really good question, right? Because the point of buying the print is to buy the original prints of the paintings. Is that not? Comment below if I'm incorrect, right? All right. Let's see what else we got here in a second. And we'll have one last surprise. Hold on. All right, I'll save the best for last. And here is a portrait of my son, Scott. Uh, he's probably 11 in this picture um, because he just looks older. I think he had braces at the time, don't remember. But he likes Spider-Man and Rebecca Gay did this. Thank you, Rebecca. It's a beautiful um, portrait of him. Really appreciate her work. Awesome artist, awesome person. So, here at see. This is the surprise. Here we go. What do we got? Okay. Boom. Wow. And there he is. Holy moly. Cable by David Palumbo. Look at that. Wow. What is this from? The Marvel Masterpieces 2020 set. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't even know how to explain to you uh, how gorgeous this is, but thank you, David. Thank you, Mainframe, for framing this. Absolutely awesome. Love Cable, one of my favorite characters of X-Men, X-Force of all time. Great. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, learned something out of it. Quite interesting. Going to have to research the mock situation. And please, put some comments below. Quite interesting on this video. It's some interesting in information. Hope you guys learned something. Take care. Hey guys, it's me, Daniel with VintageMagic.com. Today I wanna to talk to you more about our artist representation services. If you have a portfolio of artists that you're looking for a commission, artist proofs, alters, signings, we are the one-stop shop you need. No one in the world has handled more important and rare Magic the Gathering art than myself. I've worked with some of the most iconic Magic Gathering artists in working to acquire their original Magic art. The Artist Representation Service at VintageMagic.com is a one-stop shop. Being an art collector myself, I know how important it is that your time needs to be saved. What happens is you have lots of different artists around the world to manage and contact. Why not have a company represent you on every single artist that you speak to? This way, every single commission, every artist proof, every altar, every signing is managed as a one-stop shop. I've had tremendous experience in working with Magic the Gathering artists all over the world. And I look forward to helping you complete your Magic the Gathering art collection. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.